Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. So I am so pumped for the conversation that we're about to have because I am here with a superstar. So let me introduce you to my guest. Her name is Jen Hurwitz. She's a certified divorce specialist, public speaker, best-selling author, and host of the Doing Relationships Right podcast. Jen is known for her no-nonsense approach to all things relationship and is proud to say she's made quite the career out of pretty disastrous circumstances like her own divorce, haven't we all? (laughs) She's been featured in OprahMagazine.com where her book, Woulda, Coulda, Shoulda, A Divorce Coach's Guide to Staying Married was chosen as one of the best books to read with your partner for a healthy relationship. So this woman is fun, feisty, and funny, and we are going to have a fun half hour. Welcome. Oh, hi, honey. I'm so glad to be here. I just love you. This is just a pleasure. Thank you for having me. We, I've been like low key stalking you for a while now. Ditto, so I'm psyched ditto. That <laughs> I'm like, it's like we can actually have a conversation. I love like, it. Yeah. So you're awesome. Um, your content is awesome. Like you. your truth telling is like it just hits me right, you know, right in all of the feels because I love that 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 no nonsense stuff. So let's just start with your own your own disaster, your divorce. <sighs> can you share a little bit? Yes, about I feel your like background? I feel like we have so much in common. You know, we we make careers we make careers out of our divorce, and I think that's what a lot of women they have to do, right? I mean, I was a stay-at-home mom. I was married for 13 years. And I honestly just, I never thought I was ever going to get divorced. You know, you go to the chuppah, you go to the altar, you think this is it. Um, And I was like, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? I had given up my career. I was a DJ and a dance instructor. Um, You know, I I had so much stuff going on before I was married. And I just said, I'm going to raise my babies. So, um, you know, I was like, what am I going to do? So I started a blog. Like, you know, vlogs were really in in 2014. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to start a blog. (laughs) My kids were like, mom, what do you mean? I'm like, oh, be quiet. So I I didn't think it was, I honestly did not think anyone would ever listen to it or read it because I was like, who, but they did. So um, one thing led to another. And then um, I wrote a TV pilot and a screenplay. And then that kind of whatever. And then the book and then the second book. And then it just shook off. And that's, that's where I am now. And so you went from talking about, because you used to really work in the divorce yes. space and you yes. recently shifted and focused on all about relationships yeah. and dating, which is super fun. And you have some really interesting um, take on that. So what does dating post-divorce look like? Oh, it's a nightmare, don't you think? I mean, you know what? here's the thing about it. So I'll tell you, I used to be doing divorce right. And uh, um COVID kind of got me down. And then around the end of 2000, um, I thought I was going to hang up everything. I was going to be done. I'm like, you know what? I'm just, I can't do it anymore. I was in this negative place and everything was, but I was in this positive relationship. So I was, um, my boyfriend and I had been together, my partner, boyfriend, I don't know what to call him, for four and a half years. And I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of out of the divorce thing. My, my person is in this happy relationship. I have to do something. And my podcast editor was like, Jen, please don't stop. You, you know, you've got this great momentum going, let's just pivot. And I love the pivot word. I love being able to pivot and change and kind of like move. So I changed one word. I went from doing divorce right to doing relationships right and just opened this whole new genre of like, wow, I can kind of move. So now I kind of still do divorce, but, you know, I'm moving into the relationship thing and um, and dating after divorce, which is, <laughs> it's like, it's hard, it's hard, it's so hard, you know, because it's like, you want to tell everybody it's, it, it it's going to happen, right? But people feel like it's not going to happen, but it is going to happen. So, and I try to take a really positive approach to everything, um, which you can tell probably I'm a little bit cuckoo. So, you know, I do, I, I, but I also, I'm a little bit different than most coaches. Um, I coach a little differently and I can share that with you if you want, but yeah, yeah, please do. I do. Um, if you want me to go into it, I, I don't believe in juggling people. So when people come to me and either they're younger or they're older, whatever their age, people want to date more than one person at one time. That's not how I coach. Um, I really do feel strongly that you should concentrate on one person, give them a chance, see how it goes, you know, really, you know, just give, you know, give them a choice, give them a chance and and not always wait for the next best thing to come in the, in the door. Right. So some people don't like that. Some people are like, no, I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket and I'm not the coach for them. Um, you know, I really do feel strongly that it's, it's important to, you know, stick with one person until it, I'm not saying marry the person like right off the bat. I'm saying, look, three dates, four dates, it doesn't work. You say bye. But at least you're giving your attention to one person and seeing how it goes. I just feel like that's the better way to do it. I mean, quite honestly, how does someone 
when you're when you're divorced and you have kids and you have activities and you have a co-parent all of that how yeah. does someone juggle three or four dates anyway like i, I can't even imagine fitting I don't that know. in I, it's all it's crazy and i feel like it's a lot of the my male clients feel like they're scared to to con- to, to focus in on one person because they don't want to be vulnerable they don't want to be hurt mm-hmm. they don't want to say i just want to date you because they're worried the girl's not going to say it back but let's be honest if a guy was to say to you you know what i'm going off all my apps I just want to date you. I mean, what girl wouldn't want that? That's what happened to me. I sat down with my boyfriend and we were on a second date. And he's like, look, Jen, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I'm not interested. I want to see where this goes with you. I'm going off my dating apps. I was like, done. (laughs) Four years later, we're still together. I mean, it just, it made me feel wanted. It made me feel respected. Um, I'd been on other dates before where the guy pulled out his phone during my date. I was day five in. Date five in. And he's like, what do you think about this girl? I was like, what? Oh my God. From match, he's on. I'm like, I took an Uber home. I mean, so I think it's just like the whole juggling thing. It, it just doesn't. It doesn't lend itself to a commitment. If you're looking for a long term relationship, it doesn't doesn't help you any by juggling three or four. Because one thing you find, like you find a little something wrong with that person that you're on a date with, you're like, forget it, next. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, so true. Yeah. It's like the wrong the wrong shoes. Yes. The <laughs> you're like, ah, oh, I don't like these. I'll go buy another pair. Right? Exactly. You're so right. So, all right, I ha- I, I want to um, push you a little bit and ask a question that I think might be an unpopular one. Okay. And we have <laughs> don't don't look so scared. It's I'm not scared. That bad. I'm a little scared. I promise. Okay. But we hear all the time that in that we should show up to a relationship, we shouldn't have to change, and we mm. should be, you know, we are who we are, and you know, when we come out of a marriage, we are who we are, and if that other person that we're dating um, isn't doesn't accept us, then then we move on, and they're not the right person for us. But do you? believe that we actually should not be changing at all as we start to date and move into move out of a marriage and into the dating world people aren't going to like me at all for this i don't think did you this is like, <laughs> that's why i asked the question you know what you're going to get from me i'm like the most honest truthful thing in the, um you know here's the thing so i start with non-negotiables and i have my clients make a list of like what they will not negotiate right like i'm not going to date a non-smoker or a uh, smoker i'm not going to date a person with kids i'm not but look at Everyone has to, you, you have to change. You have to grow. You evolve, right? Like that's, that's what happens. So everyone says, well, I'm not going to start dating until I'm, until I've, I'm a new person and I've worked on myself and I'm so perfect. You're never going to be perfect. No one's yeah. ever going to be perfect, right? I mean, that's the point. Aren't we supposed to constantly be changing and growing and evolving? So don't you want that from your partner as well? So I want to find someone who kind of wants to evolve and grow and change with me because I'm not the person I was when I was married and I'm sure not, surely not the person I was two years out of my marriage. So I don't know, people might be mad at me, but I think, you know, you, I think you want to change, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I'm not I, saying change for the person that's different, right? Mm-hmm. Like yep. if, if someone says to you, you know, um, I want to go hiking. I, I love hiking every day and hiking is the best thing in the entire world. And you're like, um, hiking for me is, you know, outdoors is the red roof in, you know, that's me. I'm like, I would rather die than be outside. Like, I'm not saying you go buy all the hiking gear and you decide that you're now going to cl- climb Mount Everest for this person. That's changing for them, right? Yeah. How about changing with them? Changing yeah. with them. I mean, I agree too. And I think that usually when you're in a marriage that's starting to fall apart, mm-hmm. you become kind of the worst version of oh yourself and you become unrecognizable. Right. And it just happens and the other person does the same. And who you are in that marriage could be very different than who you are in a different relationship Absolutely. and you could be I mean that's certainly me like I'm a I'm a way better person right now with my current husband than I was with yeah. that you know like just way different so I I agree with you and that's why I asked the question because I think that there's this hard line that like no you don't ever have to change I think that that's a little misguided and yet kind of see it a lot on social media yeah. from relationship coaches yeah and also from relationship coaches this is even myself um I used to coach where and this is so funny I look back and I'm like oh, I've got to change that but I want to take them down I also said like no dating until a year like you have to Mm -hmm. wait you have to wait you because I'm I really felt like I wasn't ready to date and so from my experiences I was coaching from the lens of you know my lens what I did wrong but then I actually heard a couple relationship coaches that I really do you know think highly of and really respect and I thought it was really interesting that they said you know look that's not true don't, you don't have to wait till you're the perfect version of who you are because, like we just said, you're never going to be that perfect version. So 
if you're ready, you're ready. And everyone's ready at different times, right? So I thought that was interesting. I had a client who said something that was so heartbreaking to me. And she, she was just recently divorced. And she said, I can't start putting myself out there yet because I have to lose weight first. And I was like, oh, my God, like, oh, I want to cry. That. Like, and it's it, it's it's not about that. No. And it's, you know, to that, I would say that you don't have to change. No, <laughs> you do what makes no. you feel good. Yeah. But. So hard. It really is. It really is so hard. And I think that it's even more difficult because if you're surrounded by people that aren't divorced yeah. and have never gone through it, mm-hmm. it makes it so much more difficult. So I think if you're whoever's listening out there, <laughs> you should surround yourself with people who really do understand what you're going through and people don't they don't and that's why i wrote my second book um the first part is for people who are like going through divorce and the second half of the book is for married people to understand what divorce looks like yeah that, and that's important too because yeah. a lot of times they I, I think a lot of times friends just they disappear because they I don't know my, yeah they don't know they how don't know. to respond no. and i get a lot of friends who are like thank you so much jen for you know writing that book or talking about that topic because mm-hmm. they're they're uncomfortable and they don't know what to say, but now they do because I've kind of taught them, you know, it's okay to approach me. It's okay to ask me out. Let me say no. Invite me. Right. Invite me. I may say no, but I may surprise you. I might come out with you guys, you know? So, um, right, right. It's kind of cool. Okay. So, should you ever get back with an ex after a divorce? <laughs> you're feeling lonely. He's being really, really nice to you. Should you get back with them? Oh, gosh, you're asking me some good ones. You've definitely been doing your homework. Um, you know, I am I tell it like it is. I say no. I say no. I'm like, you know what? Um, why would you do that? I mean, why? Why would you do that to yourself? Didn't you? You didn't like him the first time. You know, I was like, he was. Do people change? Yes, I think people change. I do think people change. But they don't change enough to get back together. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, look, People ask me all the time, am I going to ever get back together with my husband? They ask me all the time because we're best friends and we, I mean, it's crazy. But no, even I wouldn't. Like, it's just, it's like water under the bridge. It's, you've moved into a new, I, I just don't, I think no. And I, guys, you, no. Heard, you heard that right? She just said husband. <sighs> like, this is a gin term that should probably be in the dictionary at some point. I should have trademarked it. I should have done something. I need an attorney. I actually heard it. This is so funny. I heard it like eight years ago and someone was said it in like passing or something. And I said, can I take that? Because he was like, yeah, go ahead. I'm never going to use that. I don't even know. I heard it. I was like, okay. So now all of a sudden I put it in both my books and I think it's mine, but I should, I should have copyrighted it. I think it's yours too. Cause I, I don't hear anyone else use it. And if you know, when you, when I hear that word, I think of you. Oh, so <laughs> the, the association is really good. You branded it really well. It's like well. yours. It's like happily, you know, happily even after. I think of you. <laughs> it's your thing. You know, it's like. Okay. So funny. Okay. What are some signs that you should not be dating your partner? Oh, my gosh. There are so many signs. Not to be. Red flags or red flags? Sure. Oh, where do I start? There's so many. There's, I mean, are we talking like the first, like when you, when you initially start dating? Yeah, let's do a couple from when you first start, or then maybe you're in it for a few months, things that you should be looking for. Okay, so, you know, here's my my biggest one, and all my girlfriends who are initially dating, like, oh my God, he's, you know, he's the best, he says the nicest things, he just bought me a watch from so-and-so, and, you know, he we went out three times last week, and he wants me to move in. If he's too fast, too nice, too quick, too, it's wrong. It's too, love bombing is the biggest thing. It is the yeah. number one sign of whoa nelly let's stop mm-hmm. it, and people are like you know my my clients are like no he really this is a good one i'm like no he's not <laughs> call me in a week you know like yeah so the ones that move too fast that's a huge red flag huge red flag if they're moving too quickly i'm um, now on the opposite side you know flip the spectrum if they're not showing up at all yeah i mean not responding to a text for four days um if you're on a date and they're on the phone and they put the phone face down like those are, oh God, you're like, really? <laughs> that, that can go for marriage too. <laughs> exactly. oh, we should do another whole thing on that. Yeah, I mean, this is, we could go all day. But that's what I'm saying. Like those things, it's so hard because the spectrum is so like, you just want to get it right in the middle. Like that guy. And I tell my, I tell my clients all the time, if he shows up, he's a good guy. Like you want someone to show up for you. You want to match their effort and their energy. Yeah. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be that difficult. And I think like, for whatever reason, we make it so hard. But look, you find an you found her an amazing person. I did. It took yeah. a couple tries. Yeah, me too. So, oh, I took about. That's my next book. <laughs> Wait till you read. I feel real bad for the guys that were went out with me in between. I'm like, 
I changed the names, but they know exactly who they are. There's four. <laughs> right? <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've, you find them, you know. I just think um, if it is hard, it's difficult. Yeah. But there are lots of green flags, too, you know. Was, okay, so what are green flags? Um, you know, showing up. Like, they show up, and they, and they respond to your text, and they want to hear about you, and they, they remember the little things. Like, that's a really good one for me. Like, I remember going on dates and, like, the guy would be like, um, oh, well, tell me about Zach. What, didn't he have soccer last week? And I'd be like, just remember my kid's name? Like, that's big. Yeah. Like, that's really nice. You know, it meant he was yeah. listening to me. You know, that's, that's nice. One of, one of the green flags for my husband, it was the moment that I knew this guy was a keeper. We were away for a weekend in Nashville, one of the first trips. And we were, it was a few weeks before we were leaving. And I saw that there was a book signing by Jojo Moyes in Nashville and I Chill. casually mentioned it she, I love her oh. casually mentioned it once never brought it up again we were in Nashville we got into the car he's like oh we just have to make a quick stop before dinner no. we pull up to oh, the, uh, the the little tiny bookstore where the book signing was and I sat there in the taxi and like my eyes filled up and I'm like oh this guy's like this guy's I'm keeping him I'm like because it was the noticing it was the one oh, little God. comment I, you know like, seriously that is so <laughs> Yeah. Where is he? Let me meet. I mean, that's the <laughs> thing. Like those kind of things, it happens. Like the, you find your person, you do. And I just think you have to. This is my biggest, my biggest issue that I have recently with some of my clients is that they're holding on to this person that they're dating, and it's not the right person. But they're so scared to let go. But if they don't let go of the wrong person, they can't create the space to let the right person in. Uh, you know beautiful yes it's, absolutely i could not agree more so how would you define a good healthy keepable relationship like what does that look like oh my gosh you know what's so, it's so crazy because um i know exactly what i did wrong mm-hmm. and held myself accountable in my marriage so um my husband and i we both really do know what we did wrong so i love when you ask what to do right um I don't know if you can define it perfectly, right? I mean, if I can define what it, I think communication, I think we both are really, you know, communication is just really the, the key to everything. Um, and I've learned that I have to, you know, changing your tone, being kind. Um, I've learned a lot of really cool tricks along the way that I didn't know. If I, that's my biggest problem. If I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't be divorced, which is hindsight is twenty twenty, right? I mean, but I just feel like I, I didn't know. I, I'm a big firm believer in um, therapy and coaching yeah. and doing it before you get married <laughs> or doing yeah. it, right? Why not mm-hmm. do it before? Because I didn't learn any of this stuff. I didn't learn that like, yeah. you know, that going to therapy was important before, not after the problem's already there, right? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, ab- ab- yeah absolutely. And, and then having the important conversations, the uncomfortable conversations when they come up and yes. don't let them fester. Like I was notorious for that. If me it was too. hard to have a conversation, let me lift up this rug and shove it under there until the rug has a huge bump in it. <laughs> and See, then I'll deal with it. I was the opposite. I'd just bombard, just bombard him and I'd be like, I'm going to talk to you right now. And I'd be impulsive and I'd be reactive. And I realized that that doesn't work either. So to yeah. like actually approach him and say, hey, I'd love to talk about this issue. What time is good for you? Like actually yeah. make a date. And mm-hmm. like pick a time when it's good for mutually beneficial for both of you. That's a great tip that I learned along the way. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. What about you had posted something um, recently about emotionally cheating partner. So <laughs> what what do signs look like that your partner might be emotionally cheating? They haven't they haven't done might anything. Be. Might be. Might be. Because they I got a lot done. of pushback for that. Did you see that? I didn't see the pushback. Oh, I got some pushback. Oh, I'm glad I asked oh, you. Oh, yeah. Everyone was like, well, you know, that doesn't always mean. It's not, I mean, of course, it, you know, when you post something on Instagram or wherever you're posting people, you only have 20 seconds or 30 seconds to do a reel, right? And so yeah. you don't say, by the way, it's just maybe, but it's not <laughs> always. You don't always, it's all, never, you know, we don't want to make a grin. Yeah. But, you know, obviously, like there are there are signs and it might be, um, you know, it might be a little bit, you know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, he's getting phone calls from work. Yeah. I mean, that might be a little sign. Um, the fact that he has a new friend that that is female or whatever that Lisa, he talks about Lisa all the time. And Lisa's really great from work. And because what he's doing is trying to make it comfortable in conversation. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, Lisa yes. talks about it. And then if he says her name, then it becomes it's a good one, real comfortable. And that's a real, like, I mean, cause all of a sudden like, who's Lisa? And now you're talking about her all the time, but like, see what I'm saying? Um, if you, we talked about this before, if he puts his phone face or she puts her phone face down, whoever's doing the motion mm-hmm. on the table, um, 
when you're in the room, like really quickly puts it down or puts it face down. Because when do you ever do that? Yep. Um, clearing your browser. Mm. Clearing your browser. Who does that? Who does? I've never, I don't even know if I'm my browser. Clearing your yeah. browser or clearing your text on your phone. Clearing your phone, um, mm. your v- email, um, your what are they, voicemails. I don't even know how to mean, you know? Yeah. Yeah, those are all really. So I, I had a client a long time ago who called me up. I represented the husband, and he called me up and said, I think my wife um, is having an affair. And I said, why, why do you think that? Well, he said, she completely waxed herself <laughs> and has <laughs> never done that before. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not I, laughing, but it is 100 percent true. Manscaping, all that stuff. When you start doing that, when you change your, when you lose a ton of weight, yeah. when you start caring like about your appearance more, when you leave the house and you're dressed like you have makeup and hair like done, and you're like going to the grocery store, and your your husband's like, "Where are you going?" You're like, "I'm going to the grocery store." Really? In your in your Louboutins and your flipping hair done? Yeah, seriously, <laughs> it's like I don't think you're going to the grocery store, honey. You're gone for three hours. I mean, like. It's not that hard to, but the problem is, is that social media has just made it so easy, made it so easy for everybody. It's just, you know. And And usually it's like a gut check. Like if you think it, usually there's something going on. Like usually people don't suspect something unless something is up. Right. And I think a lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot. I think some people change it. um, They don't want to know. Yeah. They don't want to know because to them, you know, it sometimes is easier for their partner to have an emotional relationship than it is to give them the emotion, to give them the, their yeah. energy. See what I'm saying? Like, it's like, let them just do it because it's easier than me having to have to deal with it. Yeah. It's so sad. Which is sad. So sad. Like, they're sad because so sad. there's so much joy but, that you can have in a relationship or just in life. And, like, how, how happy can you really be if you know that your spouse is doing that? Like, you can't. You can't You're kind be. Of, you can't walking be. through life just sort of like comatose it's just really sad and you know I, I tell people all the time like it's a choice right yeah it's a choice to wake up in the morning put your feet on the ground and choose the person you're with yeah and you have two choices you either choose the person next to you or you don't and you yeah. either choose to be happy with that person and work on your relationship mm-hmm. and do relationships right right or you don't and um some days are harder and they're more difficult but they're never it's never easy but you know what? it's yeah. I have a, a girlfriend, a coach that said this yesterday, it's, you pick the hard, you know, you pick which hard you want. You either pick yeah. the relationship work or you pick doing divorce right. Because either way, it's going to be difficult. So just pick it, mm-hmm. right? I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in a happy relationship no matter what it looks like, whether yeah. it's a happy divorce or it's a happy mm-hmm. marriage. I think it just... What if someone says that relationship, a relationship shouldn't be that much work? I hate that. Oh my God, look at me with my opinions. I hate, don't you feel like, you know, I, that's me. That was me in my twenties. Every yeah. guy I did was like, it shouldn't be this hard. I'm, I'm done. Or, you know, this is, it's supposed to be easy. And I'd be like next, because yeah. that's, I think how we were, at least I was, that's how I was raised. I was, everyone's like, it's supposed to be a white picket fence and a, and the little white, uh, no, it's not, it's work. I, I've never, I've never worked so hard on this relationship with my boyfriend now. I mean, the books and the coaching and the, yeah, then, you know, I mean, it's like, it's work. It takes work. I don't think anything that's easy doesn't take. I mean, that that's worth it. What is this? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I do. Anything that's worth it is, is easy. easy, right? Thank you, thank you, is, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's one <laughs> of those. Hard. I don't know. Whatever guys. that is. And we're recording this on a Friday afternoon. I need more coffee. <laughs> I'm like, I'm having more coffee today. I'm drinking my water. We love, but we both love <laughs> hints. Hint. Hint. There we go. You're, there's our little plug. We love it. I'm seriously. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's work. I think in. Coaches yeah. need coaches. I feel like, oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. In in every aspect, like I've I have business coaches. I have yeah. I've had multiple. Like coaching is a good thing. I agree. Which brings like drives home that point of investing in yourself yeah. is so worth it. Figure out where you need the support yes. in and find the coach that you're in alignment with and spend the money to invest in yourself. It is money that will never be poorly spent. And don't wait. Yeah. Like, don't wait until, you know, like you're already like one foot out the door and then you ask your partner, well, you know, will you go to therapy, you know, therapy with me and we'll work to whatever. And he, and that's like, it's almost like, you know, just do it before, do it before right. it gets, you know, 
Right. So you brought up something earlier as we as we kind of wind down, and you talked about um, having friends or surrounding oh, yourself with people. A nice segue. Who have <laughs> yes, <laughs> who uh, understand what you've gone through, yeah. which is a perfect time to talk about the Mrs. To Me Summit that you are a co-host of. That's coming up in July. That is all for women who have gone through a divorce going through a divorce, contemplating it, out the other side. Um, can you share a little bit about this yes, summit? Yes, and you're going to be speaking there. Yes, this I is. am. I'm so, so excited. Yes, I'm so, so it's October 24th, right? Coming up soon? I don't know what we're doing. It yeah, is coming up. Coming up. And um, yeah, so I really got involved because when I got divorced, I didn't have a tribe. I didn't have people. I didn't have friends. I lost all my friends. And um, when My Divorce Solution, the girls at My Divorce Solution, reached out to me and said, Jen, will you co-host? I was like, absolutely, because... I wanted to give back what I kind of create a space that I didn't have. Um, I always get so emotional when I talk about it because it really was, I mean, as good as my divorce was, the aftermath was so horrific for me. Yeah. I didn't have anyone. I was alone living in Charlotte with my boys and my husband. And it was the four of us and I had no one. So um, this summit is going to be a place where I think, I think we can all just say like, look, let's be positive. And let's move forward and find the best versions of ourselves. And speakers like you, we have 15 um, speakers that are just all really dynamic. I have the chills. Um, dynamic, powerful, and like empowering, and light, like just, just positive women who, um, and we're doing some other really cool stuff too, like VIP parties and a little bit of a disco night. I don't know. Where's it? I don't want to give it away, but we're doing some fun stuff and it's going to be fun. And we're going to be COVID safe. So get your tickets and don't worry. Um, and it's limited too. We're yes, not limited. talking about a thousand no, person no, 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 no. conference. No, we're going to do like hundred. We have a hundred, uh, hundred people max, and we're being safe and we're going to do it right. Um, we can do everything right. So yeah, I think it's it's. I'm excited. I you know the I had before we hopped on here. I said I just come back from a live event, yeah. and I can tell you that the the afterglow from a live event and <gasps> listening to other speakers and being inspired and crying because you're so inspired and motivated is. It, it cannot put words to it. Like, it you kind of live in this place of like nothing can knock you down after something like right? that, and you connect with other women, and you make like I made it the one that I attended made some friends who I know will be friends for I life. Love that. Um, and it's incredible. And I, this is going to be the same exact thing. And you walk away feeling so empowered and excited about your future. And you get to hang out with some really cool ass people. It's going to be fun. And I think that after COVID, like, we need that. I haven't seen, yeah. I haven't, I haven't like hugged her. I just am excited. I just, yeah. And thank yeah. you. Thank you for being there with us. I oh my God, it. I'm psyched. So it's in, it's at Hilton Head at in a Hilton? gorgeous Oh my resort. God, it's gorgeous. Did you see the pictures? It's called it's the, unbelievable. the it's Sinesta. Beautiful. I've never been there. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have photographers coming to take branding pictures of the guests if they want to do that. We have, I mean, it's just the whole weekend is going to be, it's from Friday till Sunday. Um, and it's going to be like jam packed with just fun. And it's crazy and expensive. I'm really surprised at how how cheap it is. I'm like, there's no way. Like, this is a labor of love. This is not a labor of profit. Well, we wanted people to be able to come. We really yeah. wanted people to say, especially like, you know, if you're coming from far away, you have to pay for the flight and then you have to pay for the room. But we have the room code and it's there's um a special rate. So it's not that expensive. But it really yeah. is an affordable weekend. Mm -hmm. so totally. I'm excited. And, and, and what you get from it, the transformation, Absolutely. is worth it every penny times 10 and a swag bag filled with all kinds of i mean i can't believe what we're putting in the swag bag so just come Ooh. to that yeah oh, i have I to know, know about I, this it's, it's, gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be great so all right jen you're awesome you um too. how do we connect with you how does someone work with you what is the person like who's your perfect person that you would match with to coach oh my gosh i mean if you are looking to find love um or if you just find your person or looking to date or looking to, that's my person. Um, you know, I just, I'm super positive and I'm a cheerleader. I'm just a flat out cheerleader. Like I am, if you need a self-esteem boost and you need someone who's going to get you through the process and you're frustrated with dating, I'm your girl. Um, I'm not a matchmaker difference. I don't have a database with men that are women that I could fix you up. I help you find your person, uh, cheer you on and then help you keep them. So that's kind of my, my thing. True, true story. We once, my law firm was once approached by a 
um, uh, TV show to do a reality show for matchmaking, like divorce plus yeah. matchmaking. Yeah. So we did like the the test run and the pi- the the, uh, awesome. the screen testing and stuff. Nothing ever happened with it, but. I've done, kind of. I've done a number of those myself and they never, I never, I'm like, okay, yeah. great, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So how do we connect with you? Uh, I know Instagram is your, your big place yeah, to hang out. Yeah. Actually, Pinterest is the most fun for me. Um, yeah. Jenniferherbits.com. Everything is there. So Awesome. Is, yeah. So you guys connect with her. Thank she's you. hysterical. She's, she's just a, like a shining star. Oh, you're um, so you are sweet. awesome. Thank, I thank absolutely you, adore you. I can't wait to see you in person soon in a few weeks uh, and thank you so much thank so you, one final you. tip for the listeners on how to do their relationship right oh my gosh let me think you know what I tell everybody it's not about finding the right partner it's about being the right partner Ooh. mic drop wow there we go That's my- <laughs> that was a mic drop moment <laughs> All right, thanks, thank girl. you for having me honey <laughs>